Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be another lesson on Elementor and specifically I'm going to be discussing with you the differences between the Flexbox container and the grid box. If you didn't know with the latest version of Elementor, whenever you're trying to add a new container, you now have the option of choosing either Flexbox or grid. So naturally I've had a few students of mine reaching out saying, Hey, could you please explain to us exactly what the differences are between a flex box and a grid and when do we actually use them? So in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly everything you need to know about the flex box and the grid box. And then also as a bonus, by the end of this lesson, you would be able to create a fairly complex structure, just like what we have right here. You can see it's quite sophisticated, but don't worry, by the end of this lesson, I promise you, you will know exactly how to create this kind of structure by using both the flex box and the grid box. So let's get started. First things first, here is what are the differences between the flex box and the grid box? Well, flex box, as the name might suggest, it means flexible, flex flexible, meaning that you can actually control the width and the height of the individual containers. So as an example, right, if I was to go with Flexbox and let's say I choose this two column layout right here, if I was to click on the button right here for the first column, you can see I have access to width. I can make this width a lot shorter, thereby increasing the width of the second column. So you have this flexibility when it comes to working with the Flexbox container. So if you want to create layouts where you have like a two column structure, but one column is like 25% of the total width of the main container, while the second column is like 75%, you're typically going to go with the Flexbox layout. The grid box, on the other hand, is far more rigid. All the columns, all the containers, the rows, everything, they're all typically of the same height and width. So you, you have less flexibility. Now, the irony here is that you might think that, well, because we have more flexibility with the Flexbox container, we should be able to create more advanced structures with the Flexbox, right? Actually, no. We can create more advanced structures by making use of the grid box as opposed to the Flexbox. And the reason is because with the Flexbox container style, it is what we call one dimensional, meaning that your content can either go vertically, or I'm sorry, horizontally or vertically. So going back to this exact same uh, container right here, mm -hmm. you can see that we have what we call the direction. The default is typically horizontal, row wise, but we can also go with column, which is vertical, where the columns will now stack up on top of one another. So you can either go horizontally or vertically. You can do both at the same time. That's why we call it a one dimensional. But the grid box, on the other hand, you can go both vertical and horizontal. OK, that's that for flex box. Let me now show you the grid box. I'm going to go back in here and choose grid. And let's just go with the usual uh, two column layout. Now, right over here, you will see instantly that we don't have access to things like, oh, set the individual width of the uh, columns. We don't have that because it's a grid box layout. What we do have access though is the ability to very easily increase the number of rows and columns. Right here, you can see we have columns set to two, rows set to one. I can make this one, let's say four columns as an example, and even make this one four rows. And just like that, we have a layout with four columns and four rows very, very easily. And then notice that all the individual columns are all of the same width and height. It is so easy. There is something in here called the auto flow. I'm going to explain that to you. But before I do that, let me bring this back to three columns and three rows. So what I'm going to do right now is very, very quickly, I am going to add some content into all the individual columns in here. Okay. So let's just make this one uh, two. I'm going to go back in here. Let's make this one uh, three. I'm going to go all the way to nine. Okay. So for this, we're going to make this one nine. Okay. Why have I done this? Because I want to demonstrate to you exactly how 
the auto flow feature works. By default, it is set to row. What this means is that when you, whenever you have a grid layout, when you begin to add elements into that grid, if the auto direction or the auto flow is set to row, the grid will populate those elements row by row, meaning that the first row will be populated. Once it's finished, based on the number of columns, it will then move over to the second row, populate that, move on to the next row, populate that, and so on. That's why you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I was to now switch from row to column, the exact opposite now occurs. So instead of going horizontally, we're going vertically. The grid is going to populate the content column by column first before moving on to the next row. So right now you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, as opposed to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can you now see how you can create some very interesting structures by making use of the grid box layout? So these are the differences between your flex box and your grid box. With your flex box, you can either go uh, horizontally or vertically. You can control the width and the height of the individual uh, containers, but with the grid box, you don't have that flexibility of adjusting the widths of the individual containers. However, it is multi-directional, it's two-dimensional rather, meaning you can go either, vert uh, either horizontally or vertically at the exact same time. So with that out of the way, let me now show you how you can create this particular structure with Elementor using both the Flexbox layout and the Gridbox layout. If you want to take a stab at this before I show you how to do so, by all means, you can pause the video and come back later when you've either done it or you've been un unable to do so. So you can pause the video right now. I am now going to show you, I'm assuming that you've either decided to try it and you are not able to do so, or maybe you did, congratulations, or maybe you just want to see me do it. Let me show you exactly what we're going to do. The first thing you want to do in this kind of assignment is to first of all, take a look at the entire structure as a whole and try to simplify it as much as you can. Now, based on what we can see from this diagram, how many rows do you think we have? I would say we have two rows, okay? The first row is the header, and then the second row is the one that has the menu, has the main right and then footer. Okay, that's one way of simplifying this particular kind of structure. Now, I wanna draw your attention to something real quick. I know that in the second column of the second row, you can see that the main column is a little bit longer than the right column. Please ignore that the main and the right are meant to be of the same uh, width. So please just keep that in mind. So how do we create something like this? Well, the very first question would be, are we going to add a grid box or a flex box? Given the fact that this is a quite advanced structure where we have content going vertically, horizontally, we're going to go with the grid box. So I'm going to go back in here and we're going to add the grid. And because we've said that this looks more like a simple uh, two row layout. I'm going to go with this particular structure right here where we have the two rows. There it is. So the first row, again, going back to the diagram, the first row is very, very simple. All we have is a header and that's it, right? So very, very, very easily, I am going to go in here and add the heading element and let's just assign that to the center. So we have that, okay, header. That's basically it. So let me just change the text in here real quick and call that one header. Okay. That is the first row done. Now for the second row, what do we have here? It looks like we have basically two different containers, right? The first container is about 25% of the total width of the second row, while the second container seems to be about 75%. However, the second container now seems to have like two rows and the first row is divided into two columns, main and right, while the second row has a single element called footer. So given the fact 
that the menu container in here is shorter or not as long as the second column. What are we thinking about? We're thinking about a flex box layout here. So I'm going to go back in here right now. So for the second row in here, I am now going to add our container. Okay. And inside of this container, you can see the content layout is set to flex box. Inside of this container, this is where I am now going to add my menu element. So let's go with the navigation menu. Okay. So going back in here, you can see that's the menu. Now, what about the second column in here? You can see this is quite advanced or we have uh, the very first row in here divided into two columns while the second row has one column. You should be thinking of what a grid box. So I'm going to go back in here and now I am going to add the grid box inside of that container. And there you go. However, because we're working with a container, a Flexbox container, remember that we can go either horizontally or vertically. And based on this structure right here, you can see that we are going horizontally. You have the first column called menu, the second column holding main, right, and footer. So I'm going to go back to the main container up in here. This is the main container holding the menu and the grid that we just added. I'm going to go in there and now change the direction to horizontal. Okay. So now we have our menu and now we have the grid in here, as you can see. So that's already done. Now we need to tackle how do we add main, right, and then footer inside of this grid that we have right here. Okay. Let me click in there first of all. Now, what do we do? Going back in here, take a very, very close look. You can see that we seem to have one particular container in here divided into two that has main and then also has right. But the grid itself is divided into two rows. The first row is the one that has main right, while the second row simply has the footer. So what we're going to do is for this grid right here, I'm going to go with columns set to one and then rows set to uh, two. Okay. Again, let me bring this back in here. So you can see the first row will have main and right. And then the second row is going to have footer. So now what do you think we'll add into the first row of this particular grid? It's going to be another grid that will have two columns and one row. So, I'm going to go back in here, once again, add the grid into the grid that we just added. But now we're going to make the columns set to two and the rows set to one. And now we can add our headers in here. So I'm going to call this one uh, simply uh, main. Okay. And then the next one is going to be called, uh, let me see, what do we have here? We have our right and then footer. Okay. So this one will now be called our uh, right. And then of course, for the final element in here, we're going to go in there and make that one footer. And there you go. And of course we can uh, align this to the center. And just like that, we have been able to create this particular structure right here. Now you may notice that, hold on a second, the first row in here, it's so tall. How do we reduce the height so that the second row is closer to it? Well, very, very, very simply, I'm going to go back in here. Okay. Go to this grid right here and then simply change the number of rows from two and make that one. And there it is. So just like that, we have successfully been able to create this fairly advanced structure by making use of both the grid layout and also the flexbox layout as well. I know this might be a little bit complicated and it may have looked kind of like really, really, really tough, but please try to rewatch the video over and over again until you actually are able to get exactly what I did over there. The most important thing, like I said, is whenever you're dealing with these kinds of structures, 
take a step back, look at the entire structure uh, as a whole, and then try to simplify it and then look for like the hints. Uh, do we have containers that are maybe of like a certain kind of width while the other containers are of a longer width? You will be working with uh, the Flexbox layout in that kind of structure. And then in other structures where it looks kind of sophisticated, we have one particular column that has two rows, but then the first row has like two columns. The second row has only one column. Then you'll be thinking more of like a grid box layout. So that's pretty much it for today's uh, lesson where I have discussed with you the differences between the Flexbox layout as well as the grid box layout. If you have any questions, I know what we did in here was quite advanced. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share this video with anyone who may feel my benefit from it. And of course, if you're new here to the channel, welcome to the Web Monkey. My name is Alex. I make tutorials around WordPress, Elementor Web Development. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.